Hello everyone, welcome back to a new video. It's raining, I just cleaned the milking parlor, and there are two calves on the pack, so let's go grab them. Whose baby is whose? She's not bagged up, so it's not hers. You are very fresh. Can I see butts? either she did okay two heifers okay so she looks like she's claiming that one let's see what are you a boy you're very fresh okay so I think this black one here 1693 had the boy and then it looks like 1652 right here had whatever that little thing is so we're gonna see or maybe I could be wrong see if there's a placenta anywhere here I mean, she still got the placenta, and this is obviously a very wet baby, so it could be hers, too. Shoot. Hmm. So that was the, hello, can I help you? <laughs> so that was the little bull calf. Now I have to get that other calf. I don't know what it is yet. Uh, yeah. So I'm pretty sure 1652 here had that bull calf just because she looks a lot more fresh in the just given birth department. And then it looks like 1693 had this other one, but we all look a little anxious out here. So I have to figure out a way to grab the calf without freaking everybody out. baby girl <laughs> she's pretty heavy for being so small that means I need no overalls yuck <laughs> so here we are New little heifer and a new little bull calf. I better get going because I have to milk cows this evening, so I'm not going to be the one feeding them colostrum and giving them all the goody vaccinations and whatnot. But I will put colostrum in the pasteurizer to warm up just so that I believe it's my mom who's feeding has an easier time of doing it. Something that I forgot to mention in my Q&A a little while ago 
was how Sprout is doing, because I got a question about Sprout and Pilgrim. So Sprout is doing very, very well. She was the little doling that was born on March 31st. Earlier this year, she weighed 800 grams, and she's thriving, she's weaned now, she's, she's honestly huge. And Pilgrim, unfortunately, I had to make the tough decision to have her put down because she really wasn't thriving. I tried for three weeks every single day to bottle feed her and she fought me every time. After a certain point, a little goat should be getting hungry enough to try and take the bottle willingly and she never really did. And she continuously lost weight and I think it was just a situation where it was a failure to thrive. Some sort of a um, thing in her body where she couldn't process all of the nutrients that she needed and I feel like that's the reason why she went down in the first place. And I haven't really addressed it until now because it was honestly a really bitter and just a really hard situation for me to be processing because I, I was so happy and so proud to have been able to bring her back from the cold because if you weren't here for that, she went down, she was cold, so I put her in a warm water bath in a baggie and a little hot box with the air dryer pointing in and we were able to bring her back. And I was very happy. <laughs> And then obviously three weeks later, you know, it, you had to be realistic and it was just, she was done. She couldn't stand anymore. So that's when you know when an animal stops trying to eat and when they stop trying to stand, that that's the end. And I don't know if you guys can hear that, but Little Miette here has come to say hello. She's one of the barn cats here. She is 15 years old and she's actually Buster's litter mate. <laughs> hey, old lady. <laughs> but on to some more happier news. This is little or I shouldn't say little, she's very large for a calf. This is Safira. So Safira is a great, great granddaughter of one of my 4-H calves, again, named Sunny. As you all know, I really like to keep track of the lineages of the calves that I had in 4-H. So this little lady here is a great, great granddaughter of Sunny. She was... A really special cow. She was very cuddly. She stayed my pet throughout her entire life. And this little girl is probably going to end up being really tame as well. So Sunny had one daughter in her lifetime named Sibby. Yeah, she did. And Sibby had one daughter in her lifetime that I named Sailor Moon. And Sailor Moon had two daughters in her lifetime. One I named Sailor Saturn. And the other one, unfortunately, was twice the size. Excuse you. Need help? There you go. And Sailor Moon's second calf, unfortunately, was twice the size of a normal calf. So, like bigger than this little lady, big lady. And unfortunately that somehow damaged her reproductive system because she was never able to get pregnant after that. I think she was AI'd 12 times and she even went in with the bull twice. So that was 14 attempts to get that cow pregnant, which is much more than any cow needs to have. So she ended up, unfortunately, going on the meat truck. But today, Sailor Saturn <laughs> gave birth to this little lady. So she's special, not only because of her family line, but because of her sire. Her sire is September Storm, 
who is a bull that was born in 1997. <laughs> we have semen tanks that we use to store frozen semen. And sometimes you drop a little straw and it falls to the bottom of the tank. So our semen rep came a little while ago and cleaned out the bottom of the tank and we happened to have like three or four straws from a bull named September Storm and my dad used them. So this little lady has a 26 year old sire. <laughs> so she's pretty special on both sides of the pedigree. Hey, and I named her Safira because of the books of Aragon by Christopher Paolini. I love those books and Safira is the name of the big blue dragon that Aragon hatches from an egg. So this is my Safira. Yeah, she's so big that I needed to ask my mom to help lift her up because I was like, hey, no way I'm picking her up. <laughs> But that's gonna be it for today's video guys. I hope you enjoyed it and if you did please like and subscribe and share it with a friend And I will see you in the next one. Bye